Hey, what's going on? I'm one fellow godlies and Warframe enthusiasts around the world. You're probably wondering what the Garo trailer was about, and here to explain that today, or hopefully try to, is myself, James, and Ricky. Uh, now, I'm going to warn you in advance that this script is relatively new, um, and given the fact that it's kind of... The, the potential storyline for it plays a prominent role in the actual stuff that I want to be featuring on later on in my YouTube. Uh, it's, it's, you know... It, Gonna have to be careful, not only careful about what I say, but I've, I'm kind of up in the air. There's a lot of things that are not yet done. So, that being said, I'm gonna toss it over to Ricky here and ask his opinion on what he thinks is going on in this trailer. Hello. <laughs> Put on the damn spot, Joy. Okay, so from what I see, uh, the very beginning, Obviously, there's a tyrant slash warlord or king. He seems to be sitting there rallying troops, thinking that, you know, it's all over. He's going to win everything. Nobody's going to stop him. Next thing you know, there's a sniper. <laughs> that seems to be the interfector, just chilling. And then he just pops away. Well, when you uh, say interfector, you, like, the viewers don't know who he is. Do you want to give an explanation just a short little generalization yeah uh, <laughs> the interfector uh, possibly one of the most intense characters uh, considering I am a big fan of a sniper so <laughs> uh, seeing him in this trailer kind of makes you wonder like who is this guy why is he here I thought this was about Gara. And uh, the Interfector is more or less someone who the who the Gara or wh whatever the name of the character that you've decided the name of uh, is a teammate slash unknown character. I don't know. <laughs> that might be a good time to turn it over to James. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well. Hmm. Well, you see, Put we have. <laughs> We have a super ninja guy here, you know? He, he's all cool and ninja and shit, you know? And he's he's super trained. You know, he can do all kinds of cool shit. Like, he can leap up top of skyscrapers, and he can tell teleport, which I don't think was ever explained. Uh, I think that might just be part of his suit or uh, enhancements or whatever he may have. Um... His past, at least what is shown in the video here, at about on two twenty-eight, uh, is shown to what looks to be a bunch of people fighting and indoor training, um, and he seems to find someone that trains with him well, which is the Gara. And further on in the video, let's see if I can find the time. Sorry about this. Like you said, this is the script is gonna still new and a little rough. Ah, here we go. At about three ten ish or three twelve, uh, he gets kicked off a building by, by this person he's been training with, and obviously that's not cool and probably not you know, a nice thing to do to someone. So he seems to want to get revenge on this person that he's been training with. Um, well, I'm gonna correct you there because um, he didn't get kicked off the. Oh. by the girl he was training with. He definitely got kicked off by, like, some opposing force. Um, oh, gotcha. And then... Yeah, like, you know, just, like, random people that they had encountered, like, out in the wild or wherever they are, you know? They just got into a fight, kind of like a gang turf war type of deal. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah. Continue on. And it seems like towards the end of the video, he encounters this partner person, I assume, because uh, either there was some kind of betrayal that happened when he got knocked off the building. Uh, assumably, I don't know, maybe she didn't go look for him or just left him for dead, essentially. Um, so he wants to get revenge, and it certainly seems like he did. Uh, until the end, when the hand moves, and 
like, well, he's probably terrible at killing people. He should really, you know, go back to school. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for clarification purposes, um, yes, you hit the hammer on the nail. Um, he was kicked off a building, and uh, you one could assume that because they were were training partners, sparring partners back in the day, that they would have some type of relationship and that it would be meaningful and that if he got kicked off a building it would be like a monumental upset to her and it's kind of like it's kind of hinted at that it wasn't that it was just like eh, shit happens you know and um hence why he would be a little bit messed up about it in the current time frame because it, it just it does skip back and forth from flashbacks to current day uh, stuff that's going on so um, Ricky was right to assume that um, this guy is getting assassinated. That is definitely what is going on. He is he's giving this big speech, this hoorah. Uh, this is an unnamed character because it's an unimportant character. It, like, that character had no purpose in this storyline other than to be shot in the head by the Interfect. So, good call on that one. Um, immediately, he, he like he's fleeing from... Uh, the soldiers that are pursuing him now after he blows up that building uh, although that might not be very um, no one really mentioned that I guess it's not that noticeable but you know there's a building that blows up he did that for distraction purposes to run away and um, shit what else so <coughs> after that he gets prompted with the next mission which is uh, Again, this, this, this woman. Hunt Gara. Yep, this, this woman. Well, um, one thing that I want to point out, because uh, nobody else did, was that it just says next mission. It, the missions never really displayed what details were present. They, like, there was no prerequisites. So, um, the first mission, you could assume that it was a, it's an assassination. But given the fact that he's got personal ties with this character now, it just says next mission. It doesn't tell you what the next mission is. So I'm gonna actually just stop talking for a second and give someone an opportunity to lead with that topic. That next mission not being said, what it could be, uh, and how he's gonna handle it. Well, I guess not. Rick, you wanna do this since you haven't really talked much? <laughs> Well, from my perspective, it seems like he's obviously an assassin, so he just has targets. Like, they don't say who it is, they just say location and what they're wearing, or what they're doing, where they're at, uh, where, where, what time to find them. Uh, so I guess when he sees this particular character, he just doesn't understand if it's to actually annihilate her or to take her in, but apparently it turns into a fight. So I'm guessing they exchange words between each other because they know each other, or they have a feeling they know each other. Uh, I, I can perceive it more as even that maybe the Gara wasn't even his target, and it just so happens on that mission that he encountered the Gara, and you're just like, oh shit, it's her, I gotta kill her now because I, you know, I'm kind of pissed. But I don't know for sure if that's the case, or if the mission itself was to target uh, Gara and not just something else. Right. So in previous trailers, um, I wasn't so much able to answer the particular speculation questions because I needed it to be open to uh, uh, speculation to set up, you know, exidium seeds, if you will. This one, I don't have to leave anything up to speculation because it is a script and it is concerning the Interfector origin story. And in this origin story, basically, uh, the Interfector, Zane Tyler, uh, studied at a monastery of battle monks for 12 years where he met this, this woman. And through the, the flashbacks, as you saw, he was kicked off a building um, and there was there was some uh, anxiety there because you know he had feelings for this girl it's it's not 
It's not ever implied in this trailer, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give you that freebie. He got feelings for her, and she did not reciprocate that. And because of that, they ended up fighting once in the past. Uh, the video does show that, and then immediately after, um, you know, he 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 basically just left the monastery completely. Like this changed all of his ideas and the ways that he thought this this damaged his character very very much. Uh, one could say that he was emo. He, he took this really hard. He he left everything that he was training to do in order to go be an assassin, which uh, Ricky. You tell me he got pissed. <laughs> he got pissed over a bitch. Yeah, he, he was, his was broken. <laughs> I mean, oh, dude. The, I, everything that he had learned there was about tranquility and peace and self-mastery and and what he witnessed his 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 love. Uh, she may not have been like he may not have been a love interest to her, but she was a love interest to him. So he witnessed her like just not care about someone, not demonstrate any compassion. So this changed his values, this changed his perspective, this this was his like Anakin Skywalker moment. Um, his fall to the dark side, if you will. So he went back to the city and became an assassin and if you ask Ricky, you'd probably say that it was much better for him to do that because now he's a badass and back then he was a pussy. Um, so he's got a pass with this chick and he I would say that he didn't expect to see her on his his mission log to, to find her be like literally be the next mission and that's the part where I'm gonna stop talking about the next mission because uh, I purposely want to leave it open to speculation because uh, be just for the sole fact that this is a new script and we're still working on it as we go. This is an origin story for this character. This character is supposed to show up in the main continuity. He's a, he's a main player. For him to be here, it's a big deal. And I didn't want to take Spotlight away from from Gara being a part of this trailer, because it is her trailer. Uh, and that's why we worked so hard to integrate her into this. So, um, let's talk future potential. I'm going to throw the ball in your court, James. Uh, after this conflict, um, we'll talk about like the powers they demonstrated in the actual fight, I think, a little bit later, because it ties into the future potential of this video. But um, after the conflict, when it's shown that you know Interfector got the killing blow on her, um, you noticed, because we had talked about this before we even started recording, how you didn't yeah. see that part. Yeah, I, I didn't see the part where the hand moved ever so slightly. And that obviously yeah. shows that there's some, some kind of life left, meaning that he actually didn't get the killing blow. Which, again, let's go back to school, because I mean, man, well, I mean an assassin who can't kill someone. What if he did get the killing blow, but she's just... I, I mean, I'm kind of hinting at you talking about what she actually could be, or you said that you wanted to talk about that too. Their, their abilities. Yeah, uh, I'm more curious about um, what he is. Is he human? Is he a, a synthetic of some kind currently? Or Synthetic. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so synthetic hasn't been a topic that we've covered since Octavia trailer. Um, no, Interfector is not a synthetic. Uh, that, is a, that is a clear no. Um, that is a hard no. He is certainly human. He is from Treya. He grew up there. Uh, he's he's a part of that whole situation. That I, now I, I don't know if we've talked about Treya. Treya. Earth spelled backwards. Oh, you felt it. It was very important to mention that. Yeah. So Treya oh, yeah. is Earth backwards. Uh, so, so Treya, it is Earth spelled backwards because it mirrors Earth in a lot of ways. Uh, it was the sister planet that uh, astronomers tried to discover knowing that Earth was gonna, gonna be extinguished. Uh, There's a cataclysmic event that resulted in Earth pretty much dying and them having just enough time to evacuate and you know move all of their resources to that evacuation plan. So this is years and years and years after they've already colonized Treya, but there's issues amongst 
this planet in the colonization attempts. Uh, Interfector is one of the operatives that works for Starcom, and he's a key player for Starcom because they're trying to establish dominance on Treya. They're one of the fighting forces trying to establish dominance for Treya. And so all of what you see, uh, regardless of whether it was past memories or current events going on in this trailer, take place on Treya. But it doesn't have anything to do with synthetics just yet. Uh, technology is very, very uh, far along, uh, much much more farther than it is currently. I would say that they've got Tevatrons the size of um, big screen TVs, and that's a big deal because a Tevatron is is a real thing. It, it exists. Uh, it's a five mile long like tube thing underneath gr underneath our ground. Uh, I forget where it's located. I want to say it's in a foreign country, but what it what it does is it smashes matter together, like cells and stuff. That's how you create man-made uh, elements and whatnot. So their technology is really, really advanced. And James asked the question, uh, you know, is this Interfector's abilities, his him being able to teleport, or is is this his suit? Right now, it. We're still working out the kinks in the script for it. Uh, I'm leaning more towards it being a uh, a warp drive in his suit. Like they have warp drives that mm. obviously got them to Treya, but now they're working on technology which is which is groundbreaking for for this time. And, like this is way ahead of its time. This is decades ahead of its time. But they're working on a warp drive uh, for his suit that can allow him to it, it, it isn't like big jumps like what the flagships can make but it's big enough jumps that he can clear 25 feet within a matter of milliseconds yeah i was gonna say because for a, a bigger you know, warp drive it would require a lot more power and obviously i don't think he can fit that much power into his suit yeah and he so just, he just doesn't have enough juice mobile you know you gotta think he's gonna yeah be a ninja he's gotta be nimble so you know he's got just enough power to just jolt from one place to another uh, and I think that I think that that pretty much wraps up what he's capable of it's it's not really necessarily his abilities but it's the suit but that the doesn't suit. necessarily cover Gara though right yeah well with him at least we can figure again like you just said it's a suit and then you know mixed with his martial abilities to that he's already known um, now for Gara that's a good question, because what is she if she's able to, you know, not die? She's some kind of god, an immortal, maybe? So, Ricky can attest to this. It was an interesting couple of weeks trying to come up with a trailer to integrate Gara into the Exidium universe. Um, she, like, okay, so between the time that the trailer actually aired and the Plains of Eidolon dropping, we were thinking of ways to integrate Gara into into the Exidium storyline, uh, and I could not, for the life of me, come up with a way to, you know, showcase her. And then it dawned on me, Interfector has already like we were already talking about years and years prior to this. We were talking about I think in 2014 about him having a love interest that. Um, damaged him in such a way that he would uh, abandon all that he had ever sought out to do in order to get involved with the current timeline that he's involved with. Now, what I ended up doing with the character is a lot more than what I initially intended because I wanted her to kind of be like a, um, uh, you see in the movie Logan, no, not Logan, the Wolverine, where he goes to China, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of that, that girl, y Yoka something. Was it Yoshi? Oh, I can't remember. It's like it's something that starts with a Y. But you know the love interest that he had there, correct? Yes, yes. The girl that he became involved with and then eventually conceived uh, Dagon with. Although it's, yeah. Although it's not stated in the movies, but if, you, if you're knowledgeable about the comics, he conceived Dagon there. So, um, obviously Interfector didn't conceive anyone with this, this girl because they never got to that. Um, but... She is of different origin. It's. I'm just gonna go ahead and give you another freebie. This has 
Um, very, very little to do with the trailer. It wasn't shown, was never showcased. The only thing that hints at this is the fact that she, like, all throughout the trailer, if you noticed, she didn't have her glass on. She was, she did not have the glass on her armor. And then only in the final moments of that battle did you see her pull it on her to try and muster up a final attack against him. Like, she was going for the final blow, he evaded it, and gave her the final blow. She comes from a totally different background. Her armor is actually armor and doesn't give her any additive bonuses. What she, what she brings to the story is an entirely new page of Exidium lore, and that is the Sisterhood of the Red Mages. Uh, they are a very massive force of antagonists in the storyline. They have so much essential ties to one of Ricky's favorites, Behemoth. Um, uh, these, these Sisterhood of Red Mages, they're uh, basically modern-day feminists. They, but like I wouldn't call them feminists because that would be an insult. They're more like feminazis. Like they borderline refuse to teach men in their community. They want the sisterhoods to to rule the earth. They they have no quarrels with unleashing the Grand Accuser, which is another topic for another time. I think we did mention the Grand Accuser in the Nova trailer way back in the day. If you want to go back and watch that. Uh, doesn't provide much perspective on what the Grand Accuser is, but there's this whole system called the Rift, and it's very, very similar to the Force. It was inspired by the Force. Um, there's a light and dark side, but there's also a lot more to it. Um, depending upon what characteristics your personality has, it displays a certain color, etc., etc. There's, there's so much to this world of um, magic that Gara brings to the trailer, and she just happens to be a character who is good with glass or so it's showcased and she can you know bring it forward and use it as a weapon use it as protection she's essentially your avatar the last airbender character she comes into the storyline um and it's it's i guess you could speculate that she got her powers after the fact that Interfector had gotten kicked off that building. Um, who knows? Um, but she she definitely does not have technology aiding her. She's got powers, and I I, I don't know what much else to add to that unless you've got questions for me regarding that. So basically, it's uh, with her at least it's magic, and not not like a, you know a technological suit. Gotcha. She's definitely bending the rift. Um, there's a lot of different mages within Exidium that do different things. They all specialize. It's it's just easier to specialize in a, a certain element than rather than learn them all, because it's it's kind of like um, I don't know something to relate it to. So like if you're getting into like programming, doing like Flash and all this other animation stuff. Uh, when, you, when you're when you talking about coding, there's a lot of different languages. There's C++, there's, uh, what is it, Java, um, you know, and in order to learn, like, other specific elements, like, you would have to study in them, and learning everything would entail that you learn every language, and so a lot of mages would view that as unnecessary, and that's, I guess, the best explanation I could give you about Gara in this trailer is that she's primarily wielding glass and she's only wielding glass because otherwise we couldn't integrate her into the Exidium universe. I tried to modify this character so that it would fit and that's how we did that. That's kind of behind the scenes good good stuff. Well I do find it interesting though glass magic does sound like a unique kind of thing you know. Well the thing is is like I have a lot more plans for it like I would um, even though she didn't start out being a monumental main character or anything I do want to have her have a much bigger role later on because of this trailer uh, I would like to see like that's kind of why I teased her like, coming back to life is because I want um, I kind of want to do what Dragon Ball Super did with Goku 
have him quote unquote break through the shell and, un and unlock Ultra Instinct. I mean, even if you look at the mod energy conversion, when you hit an energy orb, you kind of get that aura around you that's very, very reminiscent of Ultra Instinct. So that's kind of a hint as to what I'm aiming for with this character. Uh, in terms of like Marvel talk, when they talk about mutants, I relate a lot of the wizards, warlocks, and witches to mutants because there's uh, level levels of threat, and whereas she was like a B level, I want to step her up to an Omega level. Um, so I want to I want to get her involved in some really nutty shit later on down the road. But other than that, because like I want her to experience this awakening where she she there's a lot more to her power like that specific power itself being manip like able to manipulate glass what if she could like like drench sand into or like compress it so hot that it just forms into glass you know like what if she has manipulation over everything related to glass so yeah um yeah again I'm at a I'm at a standstill here because I think that that's all I can explain for that character without giving away too many juicy details. Yeah, and I think that in a whole is the trailer. Even I think we covered just about everything. Yeah, we went we went beyond the explanation into future stuff. Um, yeah. Get some freebies, bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> something I haven't handed out in previous trailers, so. I um, want to make a big shout out to Blake the Dead for handing me so many forma. I know, like, I've got the Nidus Reforged video uploading right now as I'm recording this, but I gave a shout out to him there, but I also want to give a shout out to him here because he literally bought me, like, a shit ton of forma. I mean, like, those three bundles. What is he? What is he, a fucking subscriber? Um, well, I, he. I, yeah, I would imagine so, yeah. He's in our clan, so. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, what a nice fella. Pretty helpful, pretty active. Uh, Sean did that, but I don't know if he. I don't. I don't think he likes shoutouts, though. I don't think he likes me mentioning his in-game name. So. Oh, you just mentioned his name. Ha, ah, Sean. Eat, I, I can eat it. About, I can talk about Sean, though. I mean, he's been in previous videos. But. <laughs> Other than that, uh, shoutouts out of the way, explanation out of the way. Uh, if you like this video, Smash. make sure you smash that like button. Like. like. Smash. Becky, let me smash that like button. Let's get to a hundred likes, <laughs> and Becky will smash with someone other than Ben. All right, guys. Ben always, is a hoe. This is sleep deprivation at its finest. I always encourage you to do is smash that like button, comment, share, subscribe. And until next time, this has been Vance, Ricky, and James signing out. Peace. All right. See ya.